What is going on everybody? So it is September. We're getting closer to October and if you've been following me for a while you are aware that I am a big fan of horror movies. I love horror movies and typically around October on my channel I watch a ton of horror movies but you know I couldn't wait that long to do a horror topic video and I thought it would be fun today to talk about some of the major horror franchises. I feel like some of my favorite videos to do in October to tell you guys about horror movies that don't get talked about enough or revisiting some of my favorites but I thought today it would be fun to explore some of the major franchises but what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna talk about one of the films in multiple of the major horror franchises that I personally think are underrated obviously these franchises have films that people absolutely adore in them that they talk about non-stop but there's films in these franchises that I feel like are overly hated for no reason whatsoever and that I feel like don't get the love as some of the other films in the franchises. So today I'm going to talk about some of these underrated horror films in these franchises that I think that you should check out. So first up is going to be Seed of Chucky. This is probably one of the more controversial takes I have on this list. I love the Child's Play franchise. This is not my favorite film in the Child's Play franchise, but it is in my top four and I think this movie gets a lot of unwarranted hate and I actually think that it's really underrated I think that if this movie was released today it would be critically praised and I think a lot of people would really love it aside from the fact that there is some dated humor because of the time period that it came out in it's a really interesting movie and I think what's really interesting about it is Don Mancini who has been working on the Child's Play franchise since the very beginning whether that be directing or writing the script he's been involved for his entire career and what I will say is I personally think the Child's Play series is the most consistent of any of the horror franchises Franchises. There is not a single film in the Child's Play franchise that I think is bad. I think that every film in it has some warrant to be enjoyable and fun and watchable. And Seed of Chucky, to me, is incredibly entertaining. I think that it's obviously a lot more of a comedy than it is a horror movie, but Chucky's character is such a sadistic, comedic character, and I think diving into the more comedic edge of his character works really well. The family dynamic between the characters in this movie is absolutely hilarious and I think it opens up a lot of really interesting conversations especially for the time period that we live in now and knowing the time period that this was released and that these conversations were being had in this film is really interesting and I have so much fun every time I revisit this movie I think it's an absolute blast I know a lot of people really hate it but I think it gets a lot of unwarranted hate and I think it's really underrated up next is a film that I don't understand the hate that it gets whatsoever and that is Friday the 13th part 5 a new beginning this movie is the film that everyone complains about because it doesn't have Jason in it but you know what I actually don't think that's to the film's downfall I think that it makes the film really interesting and I think this movie has some of the most fun enjoyable and hilarious characters of any of the Friday the 13th films the damn enchilada scene is one of my favorite scenes in any of the Friday the 13th films I think it builds up a lot of really great tension in the kill sequences it pulls back from some of the violence. I think that's because the production company had to scale it back because they were told it was too much. But I think the violence you do get in this is really interesting. I love the kill of that like biker dude with the road flare. It's really gnarly and intense. But I really like the mystery of this. Obviously it's not necessarily a mystery that you could solve right out of the gate. But I think doing something different and taking a risk, especially since part four was supposed to be the end of it. Since the production company was like, no, four is not not going to be the end we're going to keep putting out these movies i think it's cool to take a risk and i think it's one of the more fun films in the franchise i'm not 100 percent sure why people hate this so much other than that argument of jason's not in the movie jason's not a part of it i don't care about any of that i think that when a franchise is willing to take a risk and do something new and interesting that makes it all the more fun and i think this movie's 100 percent worth watching and i don't know
know why it gets the hate that it gets. Up next is going to be one that people might think I'm crazy for, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, is actually a ton of fun to me. And one of the things about this franchise, in my personal opinion, I think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise is terrible as a franchise. I don't think it works very well. The movies are really disjointed. They don't play together very well. There's not a whole lot to explore to make this world really interesting. So if you're going to go off into schlock territory, I'm totally fine with this. And obviously Matthew McConaughey is in this movie giving an absolutely unhinged performance. And it definitely dips its toe a little bit more into the absurdist comedy route. And a lot of people love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and think that it's hilarious. I don't like that movie at all. I think it's incredibly bloated and boring. And I think Dennis Hopper is underutilized. I really don't enjoy it whenever I revisit it. But this movie, I really enjoy every time I revisit it. I think it really goes into camp territory that works well. It's really fast paced. The performances are hilarious especially when they get really bad. It, trying to involve Leatherface in this weird, almost like cult underground organization was such a weird turn and direction to take this franchise. But after the third movie, which is one of the most boring and awful films that I've ever seen, I wanted anything different. And I got something very different and unique and entertaining. And I have a blast whenever I revisit this movie. I'm not sure why this movie gets as much hate as it does other than it doesn't take itself very seriously but I would argue none of the films following the original Texas Chainsaw with the exception of maybe the reboot really take themselves seriously and I think this movie's a lot of fun and I think more people need to visit it. Up next the Nightmare on Elm Street series is one of my favorite series of all time and I think this movie doesn't really get the love that it deserves and that's a Nightmare on Elm Street 4 the Dream Master. This movie I know I know a lot of people have said this over the years this movie has virtually no plot but is one of the most interesting films when it comes to the kill sequences and the overall production design. I actually do like the characters in this movie. I think they're entertaining. I think their chemistry works really well together. And following three, which is arguably my favorite film in the franchise, I don't think it gets much better than three. I didn't really know what else they could do with this franchise to make it interesting. But the people who work in the production design and who develop the idea for the kill sequences really kind of go above and beyond in this movie with making those sequences so interesting and engaging and fun. And like I said, the plot in this is relatively thin. There's not a whole lot going on in this movie, but because the characters are fun to watch and it's an engaging world, you're hooked on it. And I think those kills being so immersive and the production design being so great in it is really what sets this movie up there. And I think it's really underrated. I know that it doesn't get the greatest reviews. I think a lot of horror lovers really enjoy this movie, but a casual viewer of the franchise probably doesn't like it as much. And I think this is in my top five of the franchise, and I think it deserves to be there because it's really entertaining. Up next is the Halloween franchise, which is arguably next to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, my least favorite. This does not really work as a franchise. Michael Myers is not an interesting character whatsoever. I love in John Carpenter's original that it's it's really just good versus evil. There's not really much more to it than that. So trying to expand on it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But I think one of the most hated films in this franchise is arguably one of the most interesting, and that's Halloween 5. I know a lot of people hate this movie, and it's at the bottom of their list. But there are some sequences in this movie that, to me, are some of the most interesting in the entire franchise. I love the chase sequence when Jamie's in the air duct towards the third act of this. It's so suspenseful and engaging engaging and on the edge of your seat. It's unrelenting. I really love the atmosphere in this movie as well. And I know a lot of people don't like five because it kind of retcons everything that happens at the end of Halloween four. But I personally think Halloween four is bloated and boring. I really don't care about anything that happens in that movie. It lacks the tension and suspense of the original film and it doesn't really do anything new or exciting to keep me wanting to watch it. Five at least tries to do some things that are new and inventive that 
I can appreciate. There's obviously those that overly comedic bit with the police officers that I don't really understand why it's in there. But I still think that it's fun, and I, I really love the pacing of it. And I, it's not a perfect movie. There's obviously flaws with it. I like how unhinged Donald Pleasance is in this movie. He just consistently gets crazier and crazier as the franchise goes on. And I really like his performance in this movie a lot. He just keeps it engaging and entertaining. And it's one that every time I revisit the franchise, I actually look forward to more getting to see it. And although it's not in like my top three or four, I still think it's really underrated and I think it gets a lot of unnecessary hate. Up next in the Scream franchise is going to be Scream 4. I think the Scream franchise is relatively consistent all the way throughout. And I know there's some really avid lovers of Scream 4 out there, but I know there's some people that really don't like it. I think with Wes Craven working on these first four films, the third one dips in quality a little bit. It's still entertaining, but I think 4 really amped it up and got back into what I love about the first two Scream films. I think the chemistry between the characters is great. I think the inclusion of all the new actors is fantastic. The pacing in the film is great. It really gets back to basics and what makes the Scream franchise so wonderful. And I think 3 took some risks that don't necessarily work for me personally. And 4 kind of settled back into the rhythm while also doing some new things. And that's what I always love about Wes Craven's filmography is that he always tries to take some level of risks in whatever movie that he's working on. And I think coming back after so many years years uh, gap between three and four that he does a lot of really fun things with this movie and I think it fits perfectly in with the franchise and I think it gets a lot of unnecessary hate from people that really don't like it a lot I, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with it I think that it works just as well as the first two films do and it's one of the ones that I look forward to the most whenever I revisit the franchise and then last up on this list this is a relatively new universe this isn't a typical slasher franchise but in the conjuring universe I love Annabelle Comes Home. I thought this movie was a pleasant surprise. I did not expect this film to be as much fun as it is. It's really campy. I would actually kind of argue that this film feels like a Scooby-Doo episode at moments where it's just like, which villain can we show you next? The tone of it at times feels almost like it's meant to come off as comedic, especially like when the pizza delivery driver shows up. Like there's moments in this that just feel really campy and fun and I think that's what a lot of the Conjuring Universe films lack is that they take themselves so seriously but the writing isn't all that great so you're just left with kind of bland middle of the road films that don't do a lot for me personally but this movie takes some risks and some chances that make it really interesting to watch and I really have a lot of fun every time I revisit this movie I think it is such a blast it is so much fun and it's better than a lot of the other films in the Conjuring Universe so those are just a few films in these franchises that I think are underrated. What are some films in some major horror franchises that you think are underrated? Let me know in the comments. I always love hearing what people think about these franchises and which movies they think get a lot of unnecessary hate. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.